Hello everyone, Ricardo from Merging Technologies. We're going to have a look today at the Anubis Music Mission in details. When you start the Anubis Music Mission, you immediately see a mixer. So let me explain to you this mixer in details. So the first four channels here are the first physical inputs. One, two, three, four of the Anubis. So they are here, the first four channels in your mixing console, followed by a parallel reverb. So you have a built-in reverb here. You have a dynamic parallel. So you have a dynamic here. So those are the return channel of those effects that you can find, we'll see later on, in, in the rotary section here. It's followed by the DAW software playback and auxiliary here. And if you scroll down the page, you can see that you actually have five auxiliary. You can show them all in the show all menu here. We are running now in expert mode. So it means that we show the entire mission of the Anubis here. These auxes can be software playback. It can be your YouTube, Spotify, or whatever you want here. It can also be mixes for your performers that you're gonna send to their cues. If you scroll down now even more, we have a monitoring section for the cues. So for the cue that your performers that are recording, you can talk to them, you can listen to their mix, prepare their mix, and inject back the main uh, recording take to their headphone set. We'll look at that just after. So let's swipe back. So it's made like a channel strip, a real console channel strip. So if I click on the the home button, I can cycle through my rotaries in the channel strip. So it's basically like I go up and down the channel strip if I cycle through with the home button. The first one we see here is immediately we have reverb. So I select the reverb so I could send some reverb to my vocals here. So if I sing, I'm in low latency, I have reverb on my voice here. So I can see that this acts now as a dry wet. So I can mute it or put it to low or whatever. If I mute it, then I won't have reverb anymore. We have the dynamics that the parallel dynamics here. So it's we have three levels of dynamics. We'll see that after. But this is one of them. And we have a send. So the send can be used. If I toggle here in expert mode, you see the three sends. The three sends can be used for a uh, hybrid workflow to, to inject in your mixer channel. Uh, let's say uh, analog uh, hardware gear, a guitar pedal distortion, or things like that. So you can patch it so you can inject hybrid workflow here. If you're used to a mixing console, at the top of the channel strip, you often have the preamps. So we go to the preamps page. This is the microphone I'm talking to you. So you can see there's a peak, I can reset it here. And I can change if I go in line or mic here. And this is the input gain here of my microphone. So I can change the gain here. So this is a SM57, so it's a dynamic mic. So I, I have to put a lot of gain here. Uh, you can uh, select the, the pad, so minus 12 dB pad. Or I can select the boost, which is plus 12 dB boost. So the gain scale actually goes up to 78 dB with the Anubis. We have quite a gain scale on the on this preamp. So that's a dual preamp topology 32 bit. So the pad or the boost, and we have the polarity, and we have the low cut here. And we have uh, the other feature, which is the cut. So if you disconnect the microphone, it's really useful. You can cut it, the preamp input and reactivate it after. Or if you're coughing, you can even connect this uh, pedal to the foot switch and put GPI here. And if you cough, that's, I, I will cough now. So if I cough, you see, you can cough, nobody heard me. And at the bottom, we have the lock. So you can lock the calibration you did to the preamps. So if we swipe here, now we're on channel three, four that I had linked and locked. If I unlink, what I mean is I could have a delta here, so a difference between my two inputs if I'm going to analog gear, let's say here, and I could link, and then it will keep the difference between the gain here. When I lock the calibration, nobody can change it. So then I swipe again. That's the talkback microphone that's that's here now. So that's the built-in talkback gain. We have an additional gain that you can put to, the, to your talkback that's already calibrated, actually. Those are the, the preamps page. You have at the bottom the channel name and at the top the physical uh, hardware input uh, name. So you can really change the naming you want. And on the side, we have monitoring controls. 
So the rest of the menu here, if we go back to the main mixer at the bottom menu here, we have a menu where we see the preamps and then what else we have in the channel strip? We have the EQ. So we have a four band EQ. So you can activate the EQ. I put here a low cut so you can really uh, select what you want to do. So the frequency here, I can adjust the frequency of my low cut here so I can deactivate it as well. Now I go here on the channel strip. We then have the dynamic. So I go in the dynamic. In the dynamics, it's a three module dynamic. So if I enable it here, you can see I have a gate section, so I can put it on and off. I have a compression section, so I can put it on. So now you see I have compression already, so I could put a bit less threshold here. So there's a compression here. You see the small indicator yellow in the channel strip? That's when it's on here. So it's on and we have a limiter here that we can activate or not. I can then turn off the dynamic section. So I return now to my main menu at the bottom here. I have then the mute. So I have a mute to, to mute the channel. As you can see, I'm not going to mute it now because I'm talking to you, but I can mute it from the channel strip here. Or I can mute it at the bottom of the channel here. You can solo here, multiple elements, and you can solo clear here. You can also have solo PFL and solo exclusive in the settings. It's a small screen, so we, we also have a settings to display only the mutes instead of the solo. So swap the workflow because some people work in mute and some work in solo. The rest here, we have the naming, so you can rename the microphone and say vocals or guitar. We have the color, you can ident identify a color. My input, you can select that this is the input of the cue. There's a cue identifier for the input of the performer. There's the talk input. So the talk input is you can decide who will act as the talkback microphone. It doesn't have to be the built-in talkback. You can decide that the talkback actually will be uh, this microphone here. When you select the talkback microphone, it identifies it as the talkback mic. So we have grouping also. So in the menu here, we can create a group. So I can say group and this one, I can say this one, I can say this one, I can say this one. So now I have a group that's been created here. So if I show all the group here, so I expand the group, I can see that my group here, if I put different level a grouping here, I can tap this one here and I can just adjust it nicely with this or recall the nominal for the main one here. So you can really group multiple elements and do VCA grouping or have an entire drum set that you've started to balance and then you can group everything and, and, and control the entire drum. From the bottom menu, I can clear the group. Yes, you have a panner at the top here. So you can really pan left to right really, or go back to center. So you can see you have that. The link, so the link is if you use a stereo channel I can select these lines here and I can link with the right one and immediately it's collapsing them and this is my two channels that are being controlled here. So those are linked, you can see three, four, they're linked here and I can expand the link of these guys here and one channel could be higher than the other one. So there could be a delta there here and you could pan left, right uh, if it's a stereo instrument, by example. So that's that, so I can clear back the, the unlink here. Et voilà. So that's the mixing section. Uh, really, it's the console uh, view of the channel strips here, the input channel strip. And the thing is, if you add another device like the Horus or the Happy, is that you will have even uh, more uh, channel strip that are, will be in your mixer. This mixer can expand to 48 channels. So it means you really have a lot of channels to play with and to mix an entire drum if you want, or, or really exploit to maximum this mixer. It's a large mixer. It's not the small mixing console we have here. So if we scroll down here, so we saw we had the reverb here. We saw we had the rotary section here. So these are there. And then we see that I didn't show you, but you can edit the reverb. So if I go back here to the rotary section, I put reverb, I unmute the reverb. So I have reverb here and I can go to edit the reverb here. And in my reverb, I can change a larger room hello or a smaller one here one two 
and you have snapshot so you can recall different snapshot like this there's even the delay here one two and if you recall the delay like here you can shorten it one two one two so it's slap back now hey a beep bop loo la bop bop boom so you can really change the size here even of the reverb and the delay hello so you can hear it's already stereo here so if I go and take uh, the default room, voila. So now I'm, I'm back into my default reverb room. So I can really sing in low latency. And this is the dry wet return here of my reverb on my vocals. Same goes for the dynamic. Let me mute the reverb here. So if I go now, same for the dynamic, I can go and edit the dynamic here and I could do parallel dynamics here. The DAW is the software playback. The rest we saw, the auxiliary, it, it can be Spotify, YouTube, or whatever, or your performers. We have the monitoring section of the cues here. We'll see that. And on the side here, we have other controls. So the reference here, control. So it's where you recall the reference of your studio, by example. So if I'm there, I can recall the reference here of my studio here which would be uh, whatever we want. Now I'll put it to zero because I was recording normally at zero. So you can mute also the main room. Or you can use a headphone or the other headphone. Really everybody has their own independent mute. Then we have the mix menu here. So if I open the mix menu, I see all the mixer components. The reverb mixer is the same one as we saw the rotary, the dynamics, the sense is where I would connect the external hardware uh, gear and control them the mix alt which is a replica of the main mixer so basically the mix alt is a replica because you will want the main speakers and the headphones to have the same mix but have different volume level so this allows you to have independent volume level so the alt mix is currently mapped to the headphones one because both are listening to the same mix but each one has its own independent volume. Then you have the five cues. So five cues can be different performers, by example. So you can rename each of your performers here. The cues is their mixer. If I select this mixing, this is the singer, let's say. This is the guitar player. This is the bass player or the drummer or whatever. And they can, you can make the mix for your performers here. So you have five cues and you can patch those cues and decide where they go out. That's where we have the bus routing section. So the bus routing here is what goes out where. So you patch, the main mixer goes out to the XLR 1, 2 here at the, the back. If you don't use XLR balance and you use TRS, you can just select the main mix goes to TRS. It's the line out here, three, four. And the headphones is listening to the mix out. The headphones now two is listening to the Q1, but you can patch it as you wish. And if you go down here, you see that I've connected the line out to the send. So you see that I connected the line out to the sense. If it's a mono pedal, let's say I'm injecting a distortion of a guitar distortion pedal that's mono, I can use one channel here in my line out, by example here. I can just select this one here, and then I can use just one return here, and I can inject in my mixer the sense here. That's where you patch everything. It's what goes out where in your console. And if you had a Horus or Happy, and connect the headphone set or some digital IOs, those will appear in this page for the output, so you can route those here. So that's a very important page. This is the bus routing page. The other page we have, so if I go back here, we have the bus EQ, so you can apply an EQ on the outputs of your choice. It can even on the, on the queue, or you can apply also a bus dynamics, so you can limit the output. So basically I could decide that I apply here, a limiter now I apply everything but it could be just a limiter on this output here so you can decide to do that here and you can also uh, apply a sound ID so I don't I don't have it I have not imported here but we have the sound ID reference so we have SonarWorks sound ID support which means room correction or headphones correction built in the NBS that you can, you can import they are built in the NBS and then you can do room correction or every correction you want with those and reload them so you don't depend on your DAW or anything it's built in even for analog material you can have correction standalone even 
Then the color of your bus, so you can identify the cue of your artist, by example, and you reset, you can reset your mixer here. We have the dim here, so you can calibrate, you can calibrate the dim here. We have the mono uh, for face checking, so we have the mono here. The solo clear, we saw we have solo clear, and at the bottom here, we have another menu where we have, we can reset the peaks. So if there's been peaks uh, on my mixer, I can reset them. Find precision, it gives me more precision on the adjustment of the faders I make. Show all aux shows all the auxes. We see we have five there. Strip setup is a page where you can go and reorganize your mixer or hide every strip you want and leave just the strip channel of your performer. So he sees only one channel on his and his, by example. Or you can reorganize left or right, which channel you were at, you want in which order. Go back here. I go to the menu here again, and then we have snapshot. So you can, we have a total of 18 snapshot. So you can save different mastering session, recording sessions, uh, even set list. You could use it live. It's fully standalone. So you could even recall uh, different songs, presets and, and or mixing or whatever you want. So this, when you recall, you can recall the elements you want or recall everything so it's really select what you want to recall or do the total recall to recall everything so you can store it do a coloring and 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 everything you you, you really want to do you can you know it's really flexible go back here and in the menu here we have the peering i'm not going to show you in this video but the peering discovers devices that are merging devices over the network so they're audio over ip ravenna devices AES67 and you can immediately in one or two tap of the finger expand the mixer of the Anubis to use those channel those additional preamps and then you can also make mixes for a drummer and send it back to outputs that have been peered as well and the settings where you can enter the settings and change different elements of your mixer and then there's the monitoring section here is the communication with your cues so you can talk to the cue you want or you can talk to all the cues at the same time. Guys give us a better performance or whatever you need. So when you do the basic tracks, you could talk to everyone and you can listen to the cue. So if I select this cue, so you can listen to the mix of this cue. So that's cue two, let's say it's the bass player. You can talk to him, listen to his cue, go to his cue, adjust his cue while you talk to him, return as you are the main mixer here, and then he's satisfied with his cue. So as you can see, I have a volume to listen to his cue. So his cue is injected into, into my mixer here and I have control over his cue level and I'm not gonna burst his ears. You have to understand that the artist performs in ultra low latency and when the recording take is done, then he can listen to the main mix because he listens to an ultra low latency mix as, and now I'm injecting into his headphones so his cue the main mix that I will listen to with the producer and the engineer and we will say, can you correct this and this? Because this will be the big dot playback with the big reverb and all the effects because when he tracks, he listens to his cue. So that's the cue monitoring section. So, so really to interact with your performers. This is pretty much it. Hope you appreciated that video. For more information on the Anubis and the music mission, have a look at the user manuals and the online database on the merging site. More details in the links below. Thank you.